Welcome back to the band guide. I'm your band guy, Colin. And this is the second video in our five minute garage band expert series where I'm bringing you 30 tips and tricks for recording and mixing specifically in garage band in 30 days. Now today's gonna be all about EQ. EQ is the tool to shape the sound of our sources, whatever it be, whether it's a MIDI synth or a snare drum or a lead vocal or the entire song itself. EQ is gonna be our tool to help shape that to sound the way we want it to. Let's go and start looking at this EQ and dive into the parts. So the first thing I wanna draw our attention to is this white line that runs all the way across. That white line is indicating the frequency spectrum with the bottom being 20 hertz and the top being 20,000 hertz. This basically just means low end frequencies all the way up to high end frequencies. Now, 20 hertz up to about 50 hertz is sub frequencies. We feel those more than we hear those. Then we move up into 50 up to about 200 and that's our low end range. That's when we start really hearing the low end. And then we start to get into low mid frequencies and then kind of upper mid frequencies, and then up into the higher end frequencies, the brighter frequencies, and then we have kind of these top frequencies, often kind of airy frequencies. So how do we shape these? Well, we have these tools across the top, and I'm just gonna go one by one through each of these tools. So the first tool here is what's called a high pass filter. This is a filter that allows anything above the point that we set it, to pass through, and then it completely cuts anything below that. So anything from this point and below is just gonna be cut off. It's gonna be let in gradually, but we can also change the slope of that to make it even more extreme if we really want nothing from here down is gonna be allowed through. Then we have a low shelf. Now a low shelf is saying that anything from this point and below, we either wanna turn up or turn down. We either wanna highlight or minimize. And we can set that, and again, you have access with this Q, the Q can help us change that slope to be whatever we want it to be. And then we start getting into bells. So bells are exactly what they sound like. They're a bell. Now all four of these are bells and we kind of have a low bell, a medium, a low mid bell, a, a upper mid bell, and then a high frequency bell. But it doesn't matter if you use the low frequency bell all the way up here. It, they're completely interchangeable. They're all doing the exact same thing. The big thing to pay attention to is these parameters that we're setting. So let's say I like the way this sounds. I brought it up here. This is telling me that I'm doing 108, at 180 hertz, I'm doing 6.5 decibels of boosting. So anything that's adding frequencies is a boost. Anything that's taking away frequencies is a cut. And then that's at a Q of 2.2. The number doesn't matter. What's important to know about the Q is that a higher Q is narrower, a, a lower Q is wider. In general, I recommend slightly higher Qs for cuts, slightly wider Qs and lower numbers for boosts. That's gonna sound natural and then you can go from there, but use that as a starting point. And then, so these four are all identical, so we won't go any further into those. And then we have a high shelf and it's the same as a low shelf. Anything from here and above can get turned up. Uh, and then you can set the Q to be a sharper or less extreme. And then we have a low pass filter, which you guessed it, allows anything from here and below to be allowed to pass, anything above to be cut. So again, we get into where we have the slope, we can make it more extreme. The Q is a little differently on high pass and low pass filters. They It adds a resonant frequency, I personally, unless you have a goal in mind with that, I would focus on using the slope if you wanna change uh, how intense the filter is. And then we have the output gain. And the output gain is extremely important because our ears favor things that are louder. So if you've done a lot of uh, cuts, let's say, and your source is now quieter after the EQ, well, if you bypass it and turn it back on to decide if you like the sound of what you did with the EQ, your ear might favor it without the EQ only because it's quieter now that the EQ's on. So use the output gain to balance it. The opposite being, let's say you've added a lot of frequencies and now you have a lot more gain, you wanna be sure to offset that uh, and turn it back down on your way out and balance it. Just check the volume level and see if it's the same with and without the EQ and set it so it is the same. And then you can really decide, do I like the sound of this with and without the EQ? Do I like the EQ and not just uh, if the volume that I'm getting from it, whether it be more or less. 
And then the last thing on an EQ, on this EQ in particular, is the analyzer. And the analyzer is just gonna analyze the frequencies across the spectrum. It's gonna be after the EQ has happened. So uh, if you were to set your high pass filter all the way up, it's only gonna show you the frequencies up here because it's already cut off all the frequencies down there. If you have a really sharp cut right here, then it's gonna show that in the frequency spectrum. So it's gonna be after the EQ that you've applied. Now, if you wanna go deeper with EQ, I have a free EQ cheat sheet. I'll link to that in the description below. You can download that completely free, and I'll see you tomorrow with another tip or trick.